And I, I wonder if that would involve nanotech. But it's what they offer on a very personal level that attracts faith and worship from humans. Miraculous healing of the sick. Might nanotechnology be the tool that they use to accomplish such signs and lying wonders, perhaps? I think it could be. Because what are we told? Uh, people who are, are involved with nanomedicine today tell us that nanotechnology could one day activate inside the body to reprogram things like reversing cancer, stopping aging, or even enhancing brain power. And sure enough, leave it to the mainstream news to give me another item that seems to support this line of thinking. On Monday, September 27th, 2010, beginning of this past week, ironically, although maybe not, uh, the same day as all the alien UFO stuff found its way into the mainstream news, it was reported that UNC cancer researchers have won a $13.6 million grant to work to use nanotechnology to improve the diagnosis and ultimate treatment and cure of cancer. The five-year grant from the National Cancer Institute is directed to UNC Chapel Hill's Carolina Center of Cancer Nanotechnology Excellence at the UNC Lineberger Comprehensive Cancer Center. Now the work will be done by a man by the name of uh, Joel Tepper and his associate Joseph D. Simone. Interesting thing about D. Simone is uh, he's well known for his work in nanotech, nanomedicine, because he spun some of his research in that field into a pharmaceutical startup company called Liquidia Technologies, which is collaborating on any projects that uh, this North, University of North Carolina Center is going to be working on through this grant or with the use of this grant. So, I mean, uh, did, did we catch that last part? D. Simone is known for spinning his work in nanotech into a pharmaceutical startup company. Well, it was just a couple weeks ago, September 17th, 2010, where it was reported that a company by the name of Nanobio, a spinoff from the University of Michigan, recently passed a major milestone when it, it announced initial positive data from an early stage human clinical trial of its next generation influenza vaccine. Nanobio took an existing flu vaccine that was commercially available and merged it with a nanoparticle that was designed to interact with the antigen presenting cells in the lining of the nose. It is capable of producing an immune response, not just in the, uh, the, the cells that line the nose, but in the bloodstream as well. Again, this link between nanotechnology, medicine, treatments, healing, it just wasn't lost on me when I think about the whole satanic alien agenda and what we're always told about, oh, they're coming to help us. Uh, you know, it's going to bring a new golden age and, you know, all these cures for everything. I mean, and, and then when you couple that with what we read in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 14, it just seemed to fit together. Even the claims of these beings uh, as having long life or near immor immortality should prompt us to consider a possible type of nanomedicine or cell repair machines being used by them. And, and what about some eyewitness accounts of such beings walking through walls? Nanotechnology, uh, this blew me away. I, I found out that nanotechnology could give that impression. Nanobots infecting a surface, and I, I was, you know, a little chuckle there when the, uh, the scientists, that was their terminology, infecting a surface. So that when in contact with other pre-programmed nanomachines, basically you have, you put, a, you put up on the wall uh, nanobots that have a specific code, you know, the password to get in there. It only opens up when another nanomachine with a very specific sequence and program comes near it and thus gives the impression of it going through the wall. The last real-world connection that I want to bring up that, that happened, that really came out with full force this past week, it's actually been going on for the last several months, but been getting a lot of attention the last few days, 
uh, this past week is this whole Stuxnet malware. The Christian Science Monitor had an interesting article back on September 21st, 2010, when news of the Stuxnet malware first started gaining traction in the mainstream press. And if you have no idea what I'm talking about, basically uh, it's a computer virus that has infiltrated industrial computer systems worldwide. However, cybersecurity experts say that it's a, a search and destroy weapon, a cyber weapon, meant to hit a single target. One expert suggests that it may be after Iran's Bushir nuclear power plant. In fact, those same cybersecurity experts said that it's the world's first known cyber super weapon desi designed specifically to destroy a real world target like a factory, a refinery, or just maybe a nuclear power plant. Let's just stop right there. Designed specifically to destroy a real world target. Again, before I started looking at, at nanotechnology and developing this presentation, I had no idea that was even possible. But guess what? Nanotechnology makes it possible. And, and here's the money quote from that Christian Science Monitor column. Quote, some top cybersecurity experts now say Stux, Stuxnet's arrival heralds something blindingly new. A cyber weapon created to cross from the digital realm to the physical world to destroy something, end quote. So folks, let's, let's make sure that we don't let that just pass on right, right by. I mean, it, it's too important, potentially too important. I mean, we're talking about engineering a digital creation that can cross from the digital realm into the physical realm with, with real world effects. So it didn't take long for me to just start to ask the question and to suspect, is this Stuxnet computer virus actually the world's first glimpse at a militarized version of nanotechnology? Well, I found a study published by Dr. Jurgen Altman, professor, professor excuse me, of experimental physics at the University of Dortmund, Germany, titled Military Applications of Nanotechnology Challenges for Arms Control. And this was presented at the Geneva Forum uh, back in November of 2007. And this is all you need to know from it, this quote. Dr. Altman described a wide variety of military applications. Amongst those he cited were microscopic self-destruct robots that inserted into enemy weapons or information technology could neutralize or destroy them. The potential for terrorist as well as conventional military application is obvious. Michael Asante, former chief of industrial control systems, uh, cybersecurity research at the U.S. Department of Energy's Idaho National Laboratory, said, what we're seeing with Stuxnet is the first view of something new that doesn't need outside guidance by a human, but can still take control of your infrastructure. This is the first direct example of weaponized software, highly customized and designed to find a particular target. Sounds an awful lot like sentient software, like nanotechnology. Adding further intrigue to all of this, it was reported just yesterday that there may be a possible biblical clue seen in the computer worm, if you can believe that. Now, this is just part of the, the discussion, the mass conditioning. I don't necessarily believe this, but I find it interesting that, again, in the context of this discussion, events happen in such a way to force us to ask the question, is what we're seeing with this sophisticated computer virus in any way, shape, or form connected to nanotech? And that obviously comes along with uh, all these spiritual and prophetic implications. I find it fascinating that we have a report saying that they believe there is a spiritual connection 